It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And our conversation with Admiral James Stavridis is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And the book is called To Risk It All, Nine Conflicts and the Crucible of Decision. And it is fascinating uh, these these particular nine people, number one, but the ways in which uh, Admiral Stravitas then applies what we learn about these people uh, to everyday decision making that you and I might have to make. Admiral, good morning. Great to be with you, Todd. It is so good to have you with us here today. You have done us a tremendous favor by uh, choosing these nine individuals. And I want to start there uh, because these are not particularly uh, who we might think of when we think about people making crucial decisions uh, and and decisions that have more than just world-changing implications, as if that isn't enough, but life-changing implications all the way down on an individual basis. Uh, uh, and and so the choosing of these nine is, is a good place for me to start. Uh, and, and you've chosen some people that we might be surprised at. Was it a surprise to you that these are the ones that you that you settled on? It was very much a surprise. Um, you know, as a, someone who spent 37 years in the Navy, when I decided to write a book about risk and, and decision-making under extreme pressure, I had in my head uh, probably around 10 individuals who are all very famous in terms of the Navy. And there are some famous names on this list, notably John Paul Jones, the father of the American Navy. But the more I got into the framing up the book uh, to risk it all, the more I gravitated toward less well-known stories because part of the the power of choice here is that you don't pick just nine stories where it all comes out perfectly. In other words, one of the things I want to illustrate is that we all make decisions, hard decisions under extreme pressure, and sometimes they don't come out well. So I have some stories in here about people who made hard decisions that that did not turn out well for them. And I think that's part of how anybody can learn from the book about decision making under extreme stress. Yeah, I would guess then that uh, if those folks made it in that were surprises to you, uh, that there were some people that you expected would be in this book that you had to say goodbye to. And that couldn't have been an easy decision right there. No, I, for example, would have wanted to include uh, Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, who was the chief of naval operations in the 1970s, uh, Admiral Arlie Burke, who was uh, the greatest destroyer officer of, of World War II. Um, we could go on and on, but um, this is a nice mix, I think, of uh, well-known naval figures, but also less well-known and it's a good mix of decisions that turn out well and turn out less well. And above all, I think it's a very practical book that helps all of us prepare for when we have to make decisions under extreme stress. And by the way, you know, you need look no further than events over the last few weeks with these terrible uh, mass shootings where people have to make incredibly hard choices. Sometimes they turn out well. Dr. Cheng out in uh, California who charged an active shooter and saved the congregation. And sometimes they turn out less well, like the horrible events of Uvalde, Texas. Um, these are not just naval situations. Um, these are situations that can come for anybody. And so you have a situation such as you mentioned John Paul Jones or Stephen Decatur, um, a Commodore George Dewey, whose story is fascinating. But uh, you counteract that. You've got uh, Lieutenant Commander Lloyd Butcher uh, and yeah. the Pueblo, uh, which um, I would imagine for you, this was a really difficult chapter to put together, uh, the, Butcher, the Butcher chapter. Really hard. Um, for those who, who, who don't know, and, and at this point, it's not a well-known story. This is during the Korean War in the 1950s, when he is in charge of a very small, effectively unarmed intelligence gathering ship, and they're operating off the coast of North Korea. They're in international waters. So they have every right to be there, but the Navy has provided them no jets overhead, no capable warships standing by to protect them. And the North Koreans come out, surround the ship, 
and tell the captain, look, we're going to sink the ship and kill your entire crew uh, unless you surrender. Well, the Navy's tradition, back to John Paul Jones, is we don't give up the ship. We never surrender the ship as long as we have means to resist. And this is what uh, the captain is thinking. Shall I surrender the ship and live to fight another day, or do I go down with the ship? Uh, he chose to surrender his ship. Very controversial decision. Um, in my view, he had no means left to resist. He had no weapons that could be brought to bear. He was massively outnumbered. And to his credit, after a terrible year in captivity, but all of them came home alive. Um, that is one way to look at it. The other way is, you know, he was the captain of the ship, and if he, if he had to fight him with fire axes and small arms, he should have kept fighting. Um, hard decision, and I think uh, in the end, it's an example of the tough decisions we, we all potentially have to make. That being the case, I would assume that since the book, uh, you have had to defend the decision uh, to yes. write about Butcher. Absolutely. And I'll give you another one. Um, the final of the nine is very recent. It's from two years ago at the start of the pandemic mm -hmm. when Captain Brett Crozier, who's the commanding officer of the big, huge nuclear powered aircraft carrier, the Theodore Roosevelt, COVID hits his crew and sweeps through the crew. And Crozier is begging the Navy for assistance because he, he, he feels, I think correctly, he has to get the crew off the ship so they can socially distance, and, and, and he wants to take care of his crew. His emails where he's requesting this of the Navy uh, get leaked. They get into the public venue, and he is then criticized for taking his ship offline. Um, I think Crozier was very much in the right place. Uh, but again, you'll find plenty of opinion on the other side of that one that he should have just toughed it out and, and kept going. Um, my view, he's not in a wartime setting. He's not in combat. I think he made the right call to recommend bringing the ship into port. And that's what the Navy ultimately did, by the way. But along the way, because the emails were leaked, Brett Crozier was fired and uh, his career was terminated. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really, really difficult. It's difficult to read that chapter, as a matter of fact. Admiral yep. James Stavridis is with us. To Risk It All is the name of the book. Nine Conflicts and the Crucible of Decision. We get an idea, as we read through the book, of uh, just how fine a line these men and women are walking. Uh, when we consider uh, Admiral Halsey's situation with the situation of, of say, Commodore Dewey or, or, or Admiral Farragut, uh, and we see how... For Farragut and Dewey, it worked out. For for Halsey, um, it was it was certainly um, something that he had to to work against for the rest of his life. Some of his decision making, uh, and and it really does with these people. It it really impresses upon us how this this is such a a really really difficult line to walk. Indeed, um, I, I want to give a, a a really good story in the book. By the way, um, is uh, fairly modern and most. People will have heard of this story because it became a very famous movie, Captain Phillips, yeah. about the rescue of the captain of a merchant ship captured by Somali pirates off the coast of uh, East Africa. And this is the story of a, a, a young one-star admiral, a rear admiral named Michelle Howard, African-American woman, uh, first African-American woman to command a task force in combat, by the way. And... Uh, she is given the mission of rescuing Captain Phillips. And she just beautifully brings together all the tools at her disposal, the intelligence, the SEAL teams, the, uh, the, the destroyers, the big deck amphibious ships, the allied intelligence. She brings it all together, and, and she, she knows she's going to risk it all, as in she's risking the life of Captain Phillips, um, who is highly at risk, these hostage rescue situations often go very badly for the hostages but she she keeps her nerve she uses all the tools at her disposal um, and she is determined to rescue captain phillips and she does it is a, a very positive story to kind of balance the recklessness and the, the bad decision making you saw a couple of decades earlier by uh 
Admiral Bill Halsey. Yeah, and an amazing part of the Howard story is uh, we get a real idea of the amount of pressure that she's under, of mm-hmm. of how difficult it becomes when you've been up for over 24 hours, uh, close to 48 hours, uh, and you've yep. been following this segment and, and leading uh, this, this entire situation. And you do us uh, a great service as well by contrasting that and comparing it with a, a similar situation under which you found yourself when you were in command yeah. Not so long before that. Indeed, I was a commander of U.S. Southern Command in charge of all military operations south of the United States and faced a hostage situation. Uh, we had three defense contractors who were being held in the jungles of Colombia. Um, we'd been looking for them for several years. They were being held under terrible conditions. And my special forces team came to me and said, Admiral, we think we found them. We got a good shot at this. Uh, can we go in? And I'll be honest, I, I, I just couldn't pull the trigger I, because I was afraid of the hostages being killed. And, and I, I carried that uh, burden and I, I held my special forces back, constantly saying to them, give me a little more intelligence, a little bit more granularity. Are you sure we know exactly where they are inside the encampment? I held back, and um, when I ultimately was ready to give the order, the guerrillas had slipped away at that point. Now, the story ultimately has a happy ending because about a year after that, um, we were able to rescue them with the Colombian military, but they endured another year in captivity. Um, If I had that decision to do over again, I think I would have pulled the trigger faster. Certainly, Michelle Howard did, and it worked out very well for Captain Phillips. A lifetime of high-intensity decisions made by you, prepared uh, by, of course, the U.S. Navy for through, through that entire career, and it results in this book to risk it all. But if you were to go back and talk to young James Stavridis before he's Admiral Stavridis uh, and, and said, these are some of the pressures that you'll undergo, these are some of the decisions you'll have to make, would young James Stavridis have been equipped for that? No, I think that you mature as you go along in life, and so much of how our lives and careers turn out is a result of that balance of have you evolved enough as a leader for the moment that you arrive? And so if you'd gone back to Lieutenant Commander Stavridis when I was 36 years old um, in Uh, the tactical action officer, we call it, on an Aegis cruiser in the Arabian Gulf. Um, I was um, not prepared for that moment, and therefore it was good that I had a very senior captain over me. I learned a lot from him. And then flash forward 10 years when I'm an admiral eventually and in command for the first time of a strike group, by then I was ready. So the point is, we, we prepare for these moments when we have to risk it all, as the title of the book implies. You prepare for it kind of a day at a time, a month at a time, an experience at a time, and you hope that you're ready when your moment comes. It is called To Risk It All, Nine Conflicts and the Crucible of Decision. He's Admiral James Stavridis with us here this morning. It's an imprint of Penguin Press, penguinpress.com. Admiral, thank you so much for visiting with us today. Appreciate it. Thanks, Todd. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great day.